Redding is a beautiful place. We have national parks in three different directions, two world-class lakes. This is a sportsman's paradise, but it's also full of wonderful people. We have business leaders, community leaders, faith-based leaders, all of them working towards a singular goal, and that's to make this a great place to live. I wanted to showcase these people, give their perception of the place that they call home. This is All Redding. I'm here with Dr. Dan Goodman from Lifespan. That's uh, your website's increasedlifespan.com. Correct. We're out here today by uh, Turtle Bay Bridge. It's gorgeous, by the way. It's a typical Redding winter, another, another harsh winter in Redding. And uh, you and I met through a mutual friend because you're really big in the mountain biking, very into hitting the trails around here. Did you hit one this morning? I did. I Which, did. Where'd you go? Um, Swayze yeah. is a, uh, a, a big mountain bike um, location. So I went through Swayze and down into Whiskey Town. Kind of go up to um, Mule Mountain. It overlooks Redding and... Is that behind uh, the old Shasta, the Shasta Middle Creek School, that area? Mule Town Road goes up there. Am um, I getting my mules crossed? Yep, you are. You gotta be careful. It's <laughs> but easy all... to cross mules. I think mules, you just can't breed them, right? Anyway, along the hitting the trails, because I know there's a ton of them out there, I'm curious, do you ever see any like big wildlife? Do you ever see like a mountain lion? Yes. Or uh, any black bears? Yes. You ever have to kill any with your bare hands? <laughs> Only once. No. Only once? <laughs> probably 20 years I've seen probably Four mountain lion um, and multiple bears. Redding is, I think, one of the best mountain bike locations in America easily. Really? And I've been to North Carolina, Colorado, Washington, Oregon. I've been all over. There's so much here. It's, yeah. And yet we were talking before we started, you were talking about how the people don't utilize it. That considering how good the trails are, right. you go out and you bump into one or two people. Yeah, very few. But you were in Colorado. And hundreds it was just people. hundreds of people up and yes. down the trails. Yeah. Yeah. My parents and sister live in Colorado, and so I go in there to visit, and they live outside of Boulder. Boulder is like supposedly the mecca of endurance athletes and outdoor adventures like that. So I go there, and you're only allowed to ride certain trails every other day. Because you know? it's so... Because it's so impacted, so crowded. And so the days that I'm, I was riding there, and there are hundreds of people on the trails. And you come here and you see more wildlife than you do humans on these trails. Right, right. Yeah. You're really outside in the wilderness. And even though you're very close to town, it's, yeah, it's very private, very peaceful, calming, it's beautiful. Yeah. Now, I don't know, you said you've been here 20 years? Yeah, 20, God, 25 years. So what did bring you here 20 some odd years ago? A job, basically. I wanted to, I, um, I was trained as an anesthesiologist and at that time, this is in like 93, there was a glut of anesthesiologists in the country. Really? Yeah. And um, I wanted to move to San Diego or outside of LA. There were no jobs. And there happened to be a job in Reading. And then that day after my interview, someone said, go up to Whiskey Town, essentially. You know, go up over the hill. And I went up over the hill and that sold it totally. I mean, looking out at Whiskey Town and the Trinity Alps around there, it was beautiful. That's gorgeous. That sold me pretty much. You know, and so that's what we came here in 93. And you have, how many children do you have? Two kids. They, they raised were, them here? Yeah, totally. And um, they're 18 and 21 right now. So they've just moved out. Congratulations. My, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but they're still on payroll. <laughs> yeah, they still are. <laughs> but it's interesting is my son, who's 18, who has just wanted to leave, essentially, this past holiday, he said, um, he said, make sure you don't sell your house, you know, because I want to come back here and raise my family in this house. Oh man, that's awesome. Like, did well, you tear up? I did. You're like, oh, somebody's cutting onions. <laughs> but, uh, okay, but, okay. I'll call just, the realtor and cancel. But just to know that he likes this area. He, yeah. he, he wants to come back here. So it's like, wow, okay, so it's not that bad. Were your parents in medicine no, at all? No. Just artist, did, artist, artist and teacher. Yeah. Very good. So why were you attracted to medicine? <laughs> Totally random. The I chicks? Just, uh, no. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God, no. I mean, there was school. no forethought. No forethought. It really, the honors classes in high school, and I wasn't that smart, but the honors classes were in science and math. That's it. There was no other, no history, no English, whatever. And so if you were kind of pretty smart, you took those classes. And when I got to college, it was like, well, I'm used to taking science and math. So I just kept doing that. And, you know, then like my junior year, I'm like, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, well, I applied to med school. It wasn't as competitive as it is now. So it was significantly easier, I think, to get in back then. Don't, no, we, scrap that. <laughs> it was much harder. Not... You, 
Because I'm pretty sure you walked barefoot in the snow uphill both ways to medical school when you went. It was, you're not supposed That's to right. say that. It's never, it was never easier. It was always harder. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Come on. So um, I think what I was looking for, and, and the reason I picked anesthesia, really what I was looking for is a way to integrate you know, what, what I wanted from my life, meaning being outdoors, being able to take vacations, being able to you know, be athletic, which were the most important things in my life back then integrate that in with my career. The benefits of anesthesia is, I mean, first of all, it's extremely interesting, um, you know, giving drugs and seeing immediate reactions um, and learning how to resuscitate people. It was very, very intense, but we don't have an office, you know? And so when I'm off, I go home. And with anesthesia, you know, after you're on call for 24 hours, you're off for 24 hours. That's what I was looking for in, for, in terms of integrating my life or my lifestyle with medicine. You know, so anesthesia was great for me for a long period of time. But the stress of seeing emergencies, people, seeing people with their you know, throats you know, sliced open, blood pouring out, and seeing you know, um, women having to have um, emergency C-sections for their baby who's in distress, very, very stressful. You know, and so after a, a long period of time, that was not good for me. And so yeah. that's kind of how I transitioned out of anesthesia to what I'm doing now. That's how I ended up here, <laughs> you know, in a, a different type of practice. Yeah, no, I couldn't. I, uh, I'm a sympathetic crier I'm a, a, and a sympathetic vomiter. So a guy like me should not be in the ER. You, can, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. I don't know. I might be a sympathetic bleeder. I don't know. <laughs> I try not to find myself in those situations. So you came into Reading as an anesthesiologist, right. but now you own your own practice and you're in, I know you as stem cells and uh, blood, Oh man, I should have practiced this off camera better. Uh, but blood platelets. Thank you, blood platelets. Uh, so it's PRP. Tell me a little bit about it, please. Okay, so PRP and stem cells are, basically the, the medicine is it's called regenerative medicine. It's where we take cells from your own body, mm -hmm. whether it's from the bloodstream or, um, and that's where platelets are, or something called stem cells, which are found in fat and in bone marrow. Oh, and I have the, plenty then. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. You're going to donate. I, yeah. <laughs> so um, these are natural cells to our body, and they're the natural healing cells, which are in our body, which if you get a cut, the blood pours out in a couple of minutes, it clots, and that's from the platelets. And then in the morning, you have a scab. Two, three, two, three weeks later, you've got skin, just a natural healing process. And that involves the blood platelets and stem cells, which are attracted to the area. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're just, in, we're just trying to take these natural cells out of your body, concentrate them, and then inject them back into areas of your body that either have damage, chronic pain, poor, poor healing. It's very big in Europe and Asia. It's been going on there for 15, 20 years longer than here in the States but we're just starting to bring it to America. Well, I think, yeah, under the, uh, we had, uh, under the Bush um, presidency, I remember there was a big anti-stem cell movement and you'd hear about a lot of the professional athletes, like Kobe Bryant's the one that comes to mind immediately. <laughs> but I also know there was a lot of mixed martial arts fighters, because that's one of the sports I enjoy, uh, that were all going to Europe. Right. They were all going to Germany and it was uh, the knees, knee injuries, ankle injuries. But it is, but we are, we may be a little behind, but it is now common practice, right? So well, it's, well, it's not common. No, like it's definitely not accepted by conventional medicine in Why? America. That's a whole philosophical issue. Maybe, maybe this video <laughs> will reach the uh, leaders of the AMA, and you know what I mean. We're yeah. we're, we're going to be the you're going to be the Paul Revere of the stem cell, <laughs> and then you can always you know it was me it was me on all Reading <laughs> no, that not did this me. the Batman to Robin. Or about what? <laughs> or vice versa. Either way. <laughs> you know, I know you have a lot. Of, I've worked with you, so I know that you have a lot of people that will give testimony to yeah. the power of this. But you have a great testimony. Just a little while ago, you injured yourself pretty bad, right. And used your and treated yourself with stem cells. Right. Can you tell me a little bit about the injury and, and how quickly the recovery was and everything? I have done this all over my body. I mean, so mountain biking, I fall, <laughs> you know, break things, whatever. And so I fell off my mountain bike mm -hmm. and um, hurt my ankle. And after about three weeks, it was definitely not getting better. So I, being an anesthesiologist, I numbed up my ankle with an, an ankle block. And then with a video, you know, someone taking a video, I, I injected my ankle, you know, with blood platelets, essentially, you mm -hmm. know, and um, I can jump around on my ankle as much as I want now. 
the first time I actually really learned about this medicine was because I had knee problems and I couldn't run. I couldn't, I could barely walk. You know, I'm only 48. You know, I can't believe I'm going to not be able to walk for the rest of my life. And I had had all these conventional medicine procedures done. You know, I'd had surgery on my knee. I'd had steroids, which is a, you know, cortisone injections, which mm -hmm. is totally the standard conventional treatment. Of course. Nothing helped. Um, the next option in conventional medicine is a total knee replacement. Ugh. And there's no way they're going to do it on someone who's 48. So being a doctor, I just, um, you know, because like what else is out there? And I heard about platelets and PRP and stem cells. Found a guy in L.A. who was doing some of this stuff. Brought him up here to Reading. And I got markedly better. I found that the PRP, which is the blood platelets. Again, we're just drawing your blood, spinning it down. Was very good for soft tissue injuries, like you know, your, your shoulder, your, your elbow, your, your thumbs. But for the big joints, like my knees, for instance, mm -hmm. it, the PRP, the blood platelets, wasn't strong enough. You know, and so, like my knees after injecting this blood platelet thing, got maybe 20, 40% better after a couple of procedures, which wasn't enough for me. Then I did more research and learned more and found that stem cells, which we get from fat and from bone marrow, much, much more potent you know, in terms of regenerative, you know, um, properties. Then I basically learned how to do like mini liposuction. You know, we take some fat from your belly, you know, going into the bone marrow, which I've done in anesthesia, but we, we catch from your bone marrow and we spin them down and we concentrate them and take out the stem cell portions. And then we inject it into my knees and my knees are totally better. How, how quickly did you see, when you say totally better, after you started injecting stem cells, how quickly did you say, hey, my knees are better? About 12 to 16 weeks. To, to really notice different, a difference. The younger you are, the more potent your regenerative cells are. For me, I probably within, <clears throat> usually within about two months, you notice significant changes. Um, and then within three months, I was you know, playing tennis again. You know, and then the stem cells keep on working. They don't just stop at three months. So they keep working for six months, nine months or so. I mean, now I can play tennis as hard as I want. Before really? the procedure, my friend would stand me in the corner of a tennis court and I would take maybe one step each way. That's all I could do, you know? And now I play with the pros out at the tennis club and I can run as hard as I want. So at that point, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. And I kind of bought into it, <clears throat> got some centrifuges and some products um, and started my practice. So we talked about stem cells right. and stem cell therapy, but I know that your practice is more than stem cells. There's a couple of other services that you, you offer. There are three parts to my practice, pretty much. One is the, the stem cells or, or PRP mm -hmm. um, injections for healing, essentially. Um, and then another part is called anti-aging. Anti-aging is a general term for me talking to people, you know, ask, asking things that most doctors don't have time to ask about. You know, so your sleep, your bowel function, your your diet, your nutrition, your exercise, um, your medical problems, if you have, have any. And then we draw labs. You know, we look at, in this medicine, we look at minerals, your, 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 your vitamin levels, your mineral levels, all the hormones in your body, which include your sex hormones like testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, growth hormones. We look at thyroid, which is another hormone, much more carefully than I was ever taught in med school. Make a plan to optimize your health. It's not based on drugs. We, I mean, I'm trying to get you off drugs. It's based on, you know, vitamins, supplements, hormones, if they're appropriate, um, lifestyle changes, you know, exercise, diets like that. The other part of the practice is uh, IVs. You know, I put in tens of thousands of IVs before giving you medicine to put you to sleep, to wake you up, to change your heart rate, to change your blood pressure. Uh, very powerful drugs. Mm -hmm. So now I have a refrigerator filled with vitamins. Okay, and we put in IVs and give you intravenous vitamins compared to oral vitamins, which have to go through your digestive system, get broken down, get absorbed. Giving you stuff through the IV is everything's going right to your cells. If you have a virus, you know, the flu or upper respiratory infection, it can kill viruses, you know, cure your cold. If you're burnt out, burnt out from too much physical activity, like a marathon or, you know, or just burnt out from, from life, from stresses, IV vitamins will totally kind of rejuvenate you and rest restore health. Um, if you have cancer, you know, we can give you very high dose vitamins and in some cases kill the cancer cells. Uh, if nothing else, if you have 
if you're on chemotherapy, which basically kills everything, we're giving you IV nutrition, which, I mean, there are some significant studies which show that giving you IV vitamins along with chemotherapy improves outcome, improves well-being, decreases side effects, you know, nausea, vomiting, just from IV vitamins. So when you started this, you probably had to spend a lot of your time in educating people. Yeah, I still you, do. <laughs> I was gonna say, are you seeing a transition where it's people are coming to you going, hey, I know this works, can, can, I just, can we just get going? Or is it yeah. still like you have to explain it? You know, I think with the, the professional athletes. So, I mean, Steph Curry, yep. two years ago in the NBA championships, hurt his knee. Mm -hmm. I think it was two years ago. Mm -hmm. And he had PRP, these blood platelet injections in his part of his knee. And two weeks later, he came back. Yeah. I think people maybe heard about that, possibly. And Kobe Bryant and Tiger Woods. In some people's minds, it's becoming more like, oh, what are, what are they doing? What are the biggest challenges you have when working with people? Is there anything like that's, oh, hey, you shouldn't do this, don't do that? Yeah. Pretty much with, with these procedures, there's no downtime. It's just injections. You know, so there's no... Surgery. There's no, right, there's no hospitalization. It's not surgical, you know, meaning um, I'm not putting you under deep anesthesia and making some incisions. We're basically finding the areas of damage and injecting your own natural cells into the areas of damage. And there's no downtime, meaning you're not gonna, lie, I don't say lie on the couch for the next two months, you know, and don't do anything. Much Which is what I was hoping you'd prescribe. <laughs> yeah, that's right, really. Honey. <laughs> he can't do anything. I'd love to do the yard work, are you kidding he me? He can't I'm do dishes. The pipe, but look at this, I have a prescription here to lay on this couch. <laughs> Yeah. So, and watch Game of Thrones, you see? It was, it's in a different handwriting, but it's his. It's I promise. He wrote that. That's him writing. When the series is over, He's a doctor. he can go back then. Yeah. <laughs> it's about the same time. But right, right away, we're sending you to physical therapy. You know, we're having you do exercise. I was, that's what I was going to ask. Is it okay? Oh, so you're, yeah. still, you're still on the road to recovery. You still need to do the physical things. Well, this is just going to help it. This is going to aid it. I believe that it helps. It helps the healing. You know, that's what athletes do. Pro athletes, you know, when you get some procedure done, they are like the next day, they're in ice baths, they're doing exercise you know, to, to, to hasten their recovery. And I believe that's what we should be doing after this procedure. So the really the only hurdle is, is the financial one because right. insurance won't pay. So this, right. is, this is, has the financial, it's not an invasive surgery right. and you are, you're not gonna be on the couch, unfortunately, for two weeks watching Game of Thrones. <laughs> but if you are, it's because you're lazy. So we've established that you weren't born and raised in Reading, and I, I caught your accent very quickly. I mean, it, it's obvious you're from Texas, and so I don't. It's, is it? Are we talking like San Antonio or you, <laughs> Dallas? That's why I can't pinpoint. I grew up in New York and um, came to California after college. I stepped out of the plane to San Diego, and I was like, oh my God, this is where I should be. <laughs> you know, I should not be in New York. Um, and then I spent a bunch of time there. Went back to New York for med school, uh, and then came back out to California as soon as I could. And I, before you came to Reading, you didn't know about it. You just, hey, there's a job, there's right. an opportunity. Totally based on that. I've had opportunities to leave, to go other places, and I just, I, I love the outdoors here, and that's what keeps me here. We don't have maybe some of the theater and opera, you know, that, that they do it in San Francisco, but. Which is only three hours away. Right, exactly, if not very far. you're into opera, yeah. you can drive you three hours, yep. okay? Totally. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I don't know if it's a human thing or if it's a an American thing about, you know, go west, young man. There's something about <laughs> us having to like leave. The Europeans don't have it. It's quite the opposite. I have to stay. Whenever I get that itch and I'm online looking at stuff, right. I end up trying to find another Reading. Mm. Like I want it big enough to have certain amenities, but not too big. Right. You know, I don't want to spend 35 minutes in traffic across town. I mean, the worst case scenario in Reading is seven minutes from one side all the way to the other, and that is at five o'clock on, you know, on right. the dot. Uh, I want nature. It's really, really nice. And the people that move here overwhelmingly know that. It's the people that grew up here that, they're, oh, I've seen a change. Yeah. And it just, you gotta take it in a little bit more. That's why we're out here today, instead of inside uh, an office. <laughs> so, we're good. Sir, thank you so much for coming on. I appreciate your time. Dr. Dan Goodman from uh, Lifespan and uh, IncreasedLifespan.com.